Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four. How do I use game user settings? Let's run through a quick little example here. Some things will work, some things will not work. And I'm going to cover why and cover in detail what we're doing. The game user settings lets me change some of the game user settings. Resolution, full screen or window, frames per second, as well as other options. We can create a menu like this where I could change the frames per second and apply, and the frames per second would change. So this lets me adjust the max FPS. I can do things such as adjusting the resolution. As you can see here, I'm windowed 1920 by 1080. I go down to something smaller, windowed, and hit apply. And I can do full screen as well, but with recording, full screen just causes heck in a handbasket. So looking at the game user settings and how we're going to use it, it's pretty simple. Uh, let's spell event construct right. Let's fix that one. There we go. You're basically going to get the game user settings and apply the current settings when you start up your game. What that does is it goes through your game user settings INI file, which is in your config folder. Let me show you that here. In my example, it'll be under my project name, saved, config, and then Windows, which is my platform version. If you're inside of, let's say, a built version of a game, so this is my game itself, it'll be under the project name, under saved, config, then you have the version, which is Windows No Editor, and then you'll have your game user settings down here. So going back to our file itself, we find settings. These settings are set based on these nodes, and you can get them when you use the get game user settings node. And it's going to return back all of these settings in other individual nodes. These individual getters, which we have up here, get full screen mode, get anti-aliasing quality, get screen resolution. So when you start up, basically, if you get the game user settings and apply settings, it's going to apply all the settings from this file. If this file doesn't exist, what it does is it creates a default file with default settings, and then it will apply them. Now after that, I'm doing a couple bits of busy work. I'm filling in our drop-down box for the resolution. I'm creating a full screen and a windowed button, and then I'm filling out this drop-down box for FPS. After that busy work, I'm just simply throwing up a stat command so we can see the FPS. So once you have everything on your screen, the next thing you want to do is do something with it. And that's pretty simple. Let's look at our full screen or windowed options. What I'm doing here is if I click on the full screen button, I'm getting the game's user settings. So I'm getting it again, taking the return value, which is a reference to our game user settings, and plugging it into the set full screen mode. In this one, I have an option for full screen, windowed full screen, which is also known as bordered full screen, bordered Borderless windowed, windowed borderless, borderless full screen. It's got a few different names. So basically, it's a windowed version without the borders. And then windowed itself. You'll note that there is no set windowed or windowed option. Full screen basically is a enum with three different options. After I've set this, internally, the version of the game user settings that I have loaded up into memory now has the flag changed to whatever I've changed it to. So if you notice in here, when I run it, if I was to hit the full screen button, nothing happens. If I hit the windowed button, nothing happens. However, internally, once I hit apply, it's going to take the version of the game user settings that I've changed and apply them to the current settings. So in this case, 90 frames per second is my FPS max. Change it to 144. It's now adjusted it internally. When I hit apply, it now changes it to the actual game itself. And I'll show you that in a second. So for my frames per second, I'm simply getting the game user settings file, setting the frame limit to the new limit in my drop-down box, and then that's it. After you've changed any settings you want. Now you could have this happen in real time. You could have it where when they change an option, it happens in real time, and that's perfectly acceptable. Sometimes your player might want to change a group of options and it's easier to give them an apply button so you can easily undo it. If you wish to apply, it's pretty simple. You get your game user settings and you tell it to apply the settings. Now there are multiple apply nodes. You can see here we have apply settings, 
apply resolution settings, and apply non-resolution settings. There's also the hardware benchmark results, but that's different and covered in its own video. But basically you have the ability to create changes to only affect the resolution, such as the resolution or full screen mode, as well as the non-resolution settings such as anti-aliasing and post-processing. In general, you can just apply settings itself. Now each of these nodes is covered separately and there are some differences. Applying these versions, the non and the resolution settings, only applies them to the game, but doesn't actually save your changes to the file. Apply settings applies them and saves them to whatever local storage. You can also go in and use the save settings node. As you can see, I'm doing both of them here and it's going to go ahead and save them to persistent storage. And you'll notice this is, this is redundant and it's done on purpose. So I can show you one of the issues with game user settings. Game user settings has to be called every single time it is using it. You cannot save a reference to it. You cannot create a variable for use later. So you're going to either have to use a different one of these for each node or just continually dragging off and have spaghetti for the most part. It's slightly annoying, but I understand why this gets you the current version and it's on purpose. There are other versions. Let's do load game. Oh, shoot, what's it at? Load, load, there we go. Load settings. This will basically load up the game user settings and you can force it to reload off of disk itself rather than from memory. And what I mean by that is while I'm in the play and editor session or I'm in the game itself, changes to the game user settings will persist. So right now, for example, if I was not to save or apply settings, but I was to adjust them, they'll technically stick around as I continue playing. If you run into any weird problems, such as, oh, I'm using a drop down box and I've changed my frames per second, but I didn't save it, I'm testing, then I rerun my example project to test something else, and now my frames per second are still acting funny. It may be that your local version that's in memory of your game user settings still has those changed values. Even though they're not saved on disk, it's still going to go ahead and use them. So if you want to make sure you have fresh versions, you can always do a load settings, which of course is being a pain in the butt, a load settings node, force it to reload and run this before your get game settings. So that way it has a fresh copy from disk and doesn't use the one in memory. That is covered in its own video though. That's pretty much the workflow for using the game user settings. You apply your current ones when your game starts. Whenever you change any of your settings inside of your menu, in this case, my drop down boxes, you're going to go ahead and get the game user settings. Let's go down to the full screen one. You're going to get the current version of the game user settings and change your option. In this case, my full screen mode. And then once you're ready to actually do something with it, you go ahead and just get your game user settings again. So it gets any of your changes and then apply them. Let me show you what I mean by we can do things in real time. If I was to go down here to my frame rate limit and let's take our game user settings and let's do apply, oops, apply settings. And we'll go ahead and hook this up and we'll uncheck that. We don't need it. And we'll go ahead and compile and save. Let's run this in a window. Now you'll find that when I change my frame rate limit, it should go ahead and adjust my game user settings that's in memory and adjust it instantly. So 30, 30, 60, 144, and I'm not even having to use apply settings. So that is two different ways of doing it. It's up to you. It's personal choice. I'm going to show you simply how to use the nodes, which I'm doing in here, how you make it look aesthetically, as well as user experience for your players is up to you. That is pretty much going to wrap up the, how do I use the game user settings node? Each of the individual nodes are covered separately. They will work together to create, as you can see from here, in this example, I just have resolution windowed or full screen mode and a max FPS drop down. Over time, as I do the individual videos, we will fill this out into a complete user settings menu and you'll see how they all interact with each other.